year of Thursday Night Football begins the same way last year did, but we've changed sights. We're at Auburn for Virginia taking on the Tigers. You talk about Welsh, year 17. He's one of two active coaches to win at least seven games each of the last 11 years. The other is Bobby Bowden, whose son Terry now has a seven-year deal through the year 2004 in his first five years as the Auburn coach. No fewer than eight wins per season. It is a early summer, sticky September night here on the plains of Alabama. Virginia's won the toss, deferred to the second half. Auburn will kick to the Cavaliers because Virginia decided to take the left end zone with their choice. from Jordan Hare, War Eagle, and the Cavaliers set to get at it. Rob Baronis ready to kick off for Auburn. Antonio Womack back along with Terrence Wilkins for the Cavs. All that work in the summer. Every drop of sweat, every weight lifted, was it worth it? Start finding that now. Great pick from Baronis means Virginia will start the drive its own 20. Well, we talked about Brooks. Behind him in the backfield, he has a good running back. Matter of fact, the top returning ACC rusher in Thomas Jones, who had three 100-yard games last year. As far as the receiving core, the top returning wide receiver for Virginia is Terrence Wilkins, had a 71-yard catch for Auburn for touchdown in their meeting last year. And up front, we need to keep an eye on the left tackle, 52, Josh Lawson, redshirt freshman, making his first start tonight. First and 10, the drive starts at the 20. And Brooks to the air right away. Pass short intended for Terrence Wilkins. Good pressure by the Auburn defense and good coverage as well. Let's check the 11 for Brother Oliver's defense. We start with Jimmy Brumbaugh up front. Broke his leg against Georgia, not 100% mentally or physically, but back at it for the Tigers. Their experience, it's a good unit up there. James Collier in the middle. They're young on this defense, but they are very talented. Collier could be a special one. The top defensive back in a good secondary is Brad Ware. 12 tackles against Virginia last year. He was second team, all SEC. Second and 10 for the Cavaliers. Down to the ground with Jones, finds a crease up the middle, put it on the ground. A fumble, it looks like the Cavaliers got right back on it. Let's see, no sign from the officials yet. After that seven-yard pickup, Virginia will retain possession. It's third down. Well, Mike, both these teams want to come into this ball game tonight and establish the running game. Both of them were very, very poor last year rushing the football. George Welsh, when I talked to him Tuesday at the practice, he said that's a must for us to run the football and run it well this year. Well, third downs were better in November, but overall it was a poor third down conversion season for Brooks and the Cavaliers. Flag down. The play clock has not expired yet, so let's check the laundry. Our official tonight from the ACC, Jim Knight. And what a great story he is. Knight. George Welsh was on the sideline when Virginia played North Carolina. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Knight, you might remember, in late September, had a heart attack on the field. They worked on him on the field took him off didn't know if he was going to make it to be quite honest I remember watching the game very well but it's so great to see him back on the field as a member of the third team here tonight Cavaliers third and eight Lamont Hawkins is 80 the receiver on the left portion of your screen Auburn brought the pressure Hawkins got the ball got away from a tackle but can't get the first down. There's that good safety. Brad Ware, the steady junior, forces Virginia to punt. And, Mike, why this is important that you stop the football team, the Virginia offensive football team, is because you've got a very inexperienced 
quarterback, and you've got a chance to get a good position, field position. Here's a throw to Ahmad Hawkins and a good tackle right here by the Auburn secondary to keep him from getting the first down. Donald Scott comes in to punt. Never done this before in front of this many people. Marquise Cooper is back to receive. He's done this a bunch. Talented junior, now a wide receiver for the Tigers. Pretty good kick for your first one. Cooper lost it, now picked it up at the 19. Well, so much for the good field position. Could have had good field position. Instead, they'll start at the 23. Tim Spruill spills the returner after a 56-yard punt. Here's the Tiger offense. Leard's the new guy. Demontre Carter, great camp, got stronger. Hopefully that will help with his fumble problems, say the Auburn folks. The receivers, you know the name Karsten Bailey, rung up Virginia for 151 yards and two touchdowns last year. And up front, the center, Carl Levine, has had his position changed six times in five years. Tonight, the 50-year senior makes the first snap of the season for Auburn. Keith Evans, the fullback, was the move man. Here is Demontre Carter. Good opening show for Carter. Picks up about six. Here's the defense they'll be going against for the Cavaliers. Antonio Dingle, first team preseason all ACC, a third year starter. That's an experienced unit. Wally Rayner led this team in tackles and in sacks in 97. 44 will be around the ball a lot. Back deep, Dwayne Stoops. He's kind of a big play guy. Blocked the punt against Auburn last year. Touchdown against North Carolina in special teams. Has a knack to make something happen. Officially a pickup of seven, so Leard has second and three. Carter to the right side this time, and not much there. And there is 44 around the ball. Wally Rayner, the senior with the stop. And, Mike, they want to run the football. They want to take the pressure off Ben Leard here right off the bat. Terry Bowden is play calling. He wants to run the football, short passes. He wants to build the confidence of Ben Laird. Remember, now, he's only thrown in a college football game. Two passes, he completed one. So you talk about inexperience. The Auburn quarterback is the epitome of being inexperienced going into a big college football game. Third and short. Seventh in the SEC, and it's surprising considering how much their quarterback could do last year in third-down situations. Rusty Williams, the move man out of the backfield. Lear to the air for the first time tonight. And over through Williams, it will be three and out for the Tigers as well. And Mike, you can just see right there. He had an open receiver. He overthrew the receiver. He's nervous. You can imagine. I mean, the first game, you can practice all you want, but when you come out here and put the silks on and you get under the lights, and 80,000 people are in here. Things change a little bit. That's not the scout team over there anymore. They're a little faster. Jeremy Zills is back to punt. He's the most experienced kicker in this game. He has seven career punts, just three last year. Special teams new on both sides of the field. Virginia blocked off its first punt last year. Zills gets away a nice one. Bear caught at the 24 by Thomas Jones. After a 47-yard punt, each team three and out were scoreless in the first. Mike Tirico, Mike Godfrey, Dr. Jerry Punch, Auburn, Alabama, scoreless in the first. That's Rick Lance, a defensive coordinator, has to be pleased with that first series for the Virginia defense. The offense gains six yards on its first drive. This one starts from the Virginia 24. That active Auburn defensive line. 3 4 alignment for the Tigers. Jones. A first down and more. Thomas Jones to the 43 yard line. Brad Ware had to pull him down after a 19 yard pickup. Mike, they had a little movement before the snap of the ball. They moved to tight end from the left side to the right side, giving him a one more blocker over to the right side. They get a good double team on the nose guard. Fullback Anthony Southern with a good block. Casey Crawford to tight end with a good block. And Thomas Jones in the secondary. There's Casey Crawford. Look at that good block. Good feet. Blocks down and comes off on the linebacker. Crawford, their tight end, 86. Good blocker, can stretch the field as well. He's coming back from a broken leg and playing well. Brooks dances out of trouble, and there is Crawford. Another Virginia first down, their first visit to Tiger territory. Wasn't there a song, what a difference a year makes? Well, maybe it was a difference a day makes, but 
Aaron Brooks, you see him settle in the pocket. Mike, last year at the beginning of the year, he may have been fast throwing the football, fast bailing out, but you see tonight, he has turned into a veteran. He makes good decisions. Six foot four frame. He found Casey Crawford over the middle. Two nice pickups. This veteran Tiger defense will be tested on the series. Brooks hands to Jones. Knocked down across the 39. Leonardo Carson, 95, the right end from Mobile, Alabama, in on the tackle. Well, Mike, we talk about Aaron Brooks last year, and you look at the first seven games, six touchdown passes and six interceptions. And that's, again, they didn't have a lot of confidence in him, so their play calling was, was adjusted to what he did. And look at the last four games. When they opened it up a little bit more with him, he felt the light bulb came on in his head. 14 touchdown passes, one interception. They've got a veteran quarterback. Co-captain of this team, voted by his teammates. Second and seven. Delay with Jones. Rob Payton from the strong safety spot helped make that tackle. It'll be third and a couple for the Cavs. Well, now you need your veteran quarterback to come through here, Mike. And, and you know, pro football fans and college football fans remember Cordell Stewart a few years ago. Aaron Brooks is probably the next Cordell Stewart in some pro team's situation. He runs a 4-5-40. He vertical jumps 40 inches. He throws the ball. He's accurate. He's a he's a dart running the football. This is a outstanding quarterback in college football. We saw that athletic ability, even though he was young and inexperienced, did put up good numbers against the Tigers. A couple of key mistakes kept Virginia off the scoreboard. First down awaits at the 32. Brooks lost his footing. And lost nine yards, Leonardo Carson made two big plays on that series. Well, Leonardo Carson came from the outside. You talked about he played high school football at Shaw High School in Mobile, Alabama. He really comes off the ball, and he gets inside on Josh Lawson to the quarterback. He beats Josh Lawson's box. Now, here he comes on the outside, and they got a twist going, and Leonardo Carson makes that hit. On the quarterback, Aaron Brooks. A nice call by Bill Oliver with the twist. Second kick for Donald Scott. This one not for distance, but placement. They stopped it at the one. It's where the ball is, not the player's feet. Virginia stops after a 40-yard punt. Dwayne Stukes, the guy who always is around the ball on special teams for the Cavs, helped Donald Scott. Barry Auburn back in the shadows of their own goalpost. 99 yards to go. We're starting off a fabulous Labor Day weekend here on ESPN with Virginia Auburn scoreless in the first. The Cavs have the whole field to go. backfield Keith Evans barely gets out to the one Byron three a linebacker made that tackle and here's where Virginia knows also they can creep eight nine people up there because they know they have an inexperienced quarterback last year negative yard games three they averaged only 73 yards rushing and their longest run was 25 yards last year and you asked me early in the ball game you know whether you can turn it on right now well the coaches feel they can run the ball better but they have to prove it out here game nothing same formation for second and ten evans again and with a freshman quarterback or making his first start i should say leard is a sophomore don't want to do anything but punt here, right? I'll tell you exactly what Terry Bowden's thinking. He's thinking, hey, I got a defense that's pretty good. I'm not going to blow this football game throwing it up here right here. I want to get a few yards and punt this football out. Now, if he's going to, they're going to call it, if, if he's going to throw, he's going to throw a safe throw. It's going to be an out or something that he can throw where he's not throwing the ball over the middle of the field. I don't believe. Ten on the play clock before this third and nine. Or throw it deep. Interception would equal a punt. Well, three carries for the freshman fullback, Keith Evans. 
They get to the five, at least they'll have close to the normal distance for the snap for the punt. Yeah, Wally Rainer is an active middle linebacker. Rick Lance said he improved more than any player he's ever coached. Number 44. Now he knows he doesn't have to worry about pass. He just came through the block of the offensive lineman, number 60, Hart McGarry, and made that play. Now Virginia gets excellent field position here. They blocked an Auburn punt last year's ball game. Jeremy Zills to kick. They set up the return for Thomas Jones. Going to let it bounce. Out of bounds at the 44, so Virginia takes over in Auburn territory. Big test for the Auburn defense. Virginia starts in Tiger territory. And Brooks to the ground right away. Well, that was a bad looking play. As Bill Walsh, the former 49er coach, said that blew up from the start. <laughs> like the left guard uh, tripped, or the center probably stepped on the foot of Aaron Brooks. And it just didn't look very good. George Welsh knows he's winning the field position war, but he'd like to, to get down here a little further and get some points on the board and put some pressure on Ben Laird, make him come out and, and play a little bit more. Welch's Virginia team, seven wins, but no bowl last year. Good number of starters back, picked second or third, depending on who you listen to in the ACC. Brooks to the air to Terrence Wilkins, who dropped it. Wilkins, the senior, who caught 37 last year, can't hang on to that throw. Well, one of the concerns of Virginia tonight is number 52, the offensive left tackle. Josh Lawson, you see, he came outside. He brushed Leonardo Carson here and, and made a good block, but they're concerned about him. He's, he doesn't have a lot of experience on that play I drew a little bit ago. They worked him inside. He's got to come off on Leonardo Carson on that little twist on the outside. He didn't do it. Kevin Coffey joins the receiving floor with Wilkins. The third and 13. Defense shows one thing, then backs out. Good coverage, Brooks Adlers. Nearly intercepted. Larry Cashner had a couple of picks last year. Broke it up. They had great field position and lost three yards on three well, plays. They really did, Mike. They had an excellent opportunity there and lost it. They go to the shotgun on third down to give Aaron Brooks a little bit better look at Bill Oliver's defense. Nothing open because they dropped into heavy zone. Now he tries to get the ball to Kevin Coffey. Larry Casher broke on the ball very nicely. Donald Scott to kick to Marquise Cooper. Might get his hands on it this time. Not a good kick. drive started at the 43 and after the punt they only get about 15 yards out of it Auburn ball scoreless first quarter five possessions five punts two good defenses two offenses trying to find a personality scoreless in the first quarter here on the plains of Alabama on a steamy early September night. They walk up on Leard. Just gets rid of it. Karsten Bailey had no prayer of getting near it. Penalty marker down. Thrown at the line of scrimmage, too. Virginia a little anxious to get to Lear. Anthony Poindexter is an excellent free safety, and Rick Lance is going to try to get him involved a little bit more. Here he moves up to the outside. He's going to come on the outside on the blitz. Right into the play action of the uh, three-step drop pass to Karsten Bailey, and uh, got his hands up, but offsides on Virginia. That's the thing you worry about as a coach in the first game. Your offside penalties, uh, because you got officials uh, first time in a game type situation with the crowd in here. On first and five, Evans, the freshman, moves to block for Demontre Carter. 
Middle short of the 35, and here's Dr. Jerry Putts. Earlier in the week, Terry Bowden said that the, he would let the Virginia offense dictate what he did with his offense tonight. He said, if our defense can hold their offense and pretty much shut them out, we'll play it close to the vest, be very, very conservative, and give our quarterback, Ben Laird, a time to get some time, some snaps under the lights, in front of the cameras, and try to get this football game into the third and fourth quarter before we open it up. Now, if Virginia scores early and begins pointing points on the board, we'll have to open it up early, but basically, he is loving what he's seeing. Second and four he has right now, Doc. Carter tries the right side. Tripped over the feet that were down in that Heath Evans block. It'll be third and a couple. Mike, I want to add to what Jerry Punch said and Terry Bowden. This is like a quarterback like Ben Laird is like when you were a kid and you rode a bicycle and you had the training wheels on. I mean, that's what he's doing with him tonight. He's going to let him ride the bike, but his training wheels are on. Now, sooner or later this season or this game, he's got to take those training wheels off and see if he can if he can ride the bike, uh, as you might say. But right now, he's got the training wheels on him, and he's not allowing him to do very much. Field position will dictate that Field a little bit. Field position will dictate also because if he throws an interception, you don't want it down inside the 50-yard line. If you're going to make some throws, make quick throws and out throws. Run again. Toss to Carter. Uh -uh. Maybe a yard. Virginia sniffed that out. If you know they're not going to throw, the run becomes easier to stop. Byron Threep had one in his sights the whole time. And, and Mike, you're exactly right. When your quarterback's on training, training, reel, uh, training wheels, you all of a sudden now you get defensive guys up there, your safeties. You're sitting there with eight, nine guys winning the war against the running game. So it's very, very difficult. Wally Rayner helping to clean up there as well. Zills to kick again. Thomas Jones is back. Hills has done a nice job and a fair catch. Drive start at the 23. Antoine Womack in a tailback for this series, which starts from Virginia's 23. And the sophomore moves out to the 30. Womack out of Hampton, Virginia, had 44 carries last year for 208 yards. Boy, Woody Hayes would love this game. Wouldn't he, the former <laughs> Ohio State coach? This is, is knuckle down and run the football night here. And uh, the first quarter's flying by, only 2.56 to, to go in the first quarter. And Auburn's offense, they've had nine plays, just 12 yards trying to run the football. Virginia's got the experienced quarterback. Why aren't they being more aggressive offensively? I, I think they're, they're trying to set up the run and trying to set up their play action passing game then. I think they'll feel a little bit better. They've got a question mark at their wide receiver position. You do need the guys to catch it every once in a while, don't you? Womack second and three. It'll be third in the yard. That's Rob Pate, the sophomore, from his strong safety spot. To various pounds, the linebacker in there. Also, Rob Pate, the secondary. And it, again, the secondary of Auburn starts to cheat up a little bit to try to help on the run. Short yardage has not been good for Virginia. They need to make a first down and uh, put a little bit more pressure on this Auburn defense. Auburn's defense, again, has to try to play above their level tonight to try to help their offense. Well, who will get the first third down conversion? Each team is 0 for 3. Southern is the lone back. The swing to Southern. Can he get there? No! Haven Fields, the junior inside linebacker, forces the Cavaliers to punt. Well, Auburn lost uh, Takeo Spikes and uh, Ricky Neal last year's linebackers and made uh, over half the tackles. And a big question mark was whether they'd have linebackers to fill those positions. Haven Fields does a nice job in man coverage of scraping out and making a tackle on big Anthony Southern before he could get to the first down marker. You think Ray Guy is watching tonight? I tell you, the punters all over America are saying, hey, it's finally a night for the punters. Donald Scott and Marquis Cooper get more air time. Cooper, fair catch. On the way out of bounds at the 28th. Before the Auburn offense comes back, here's Doug Punch. Guys, in 25 years of collegiate and professional football officiating, 51-year-old 
North Carolina businessman Jim Knight has seen a lot of remarkable comebacks, but none to compare to the one he pulled off on September 27, 1997. It was in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, second quarter of a North Carolina-Virginia game at Keenan Stadium, and suddenly he had a heart attack. No warning. One minute he was fine, the next moment he was lifeless on the field. His heart had stopped, and the, work, the doctors were pounding on his chest trying to get him to survive. Remarkably, 50 weeks later, he is back on the football field tonight as an ACC referee. We talk about effort, courage, and dedication in athletics. No better example than this young man tonight. No question, Jerry. So good to see him back. I'm sure the Virginia players who watched from the sidelines glad to see the referee on the field again. Lear to the air. First completions to Clifton Robinson, the sophomore. Just short of the first down. That's the best thing that could happen to Auburn. A safe call and great pass protection. Geno James and the offensive line of Auburn gives time for Ben Lear to make this throw. No pressure on the quarterback at all. This Geno James, a big offensive tackle, 6'4", 298, number 78 blocking. On number 95, Travis Griffith. Did a good job on Griffith, who had six sacks last year, but some confusion here, which you knew you would see out of Auburn's offense, and they are forced to take a timeout. So as he comes to the sidelines, we'll step out for a second. Couple of plays left in the first quarter of a scoreless game. Well, that Auburn defense is saying, hey, guys, just a yard, and you'll get a first down, and we can really get a rest here Well, that's tonight. why I was thinking right here is a good pass down for Auburn. But you might think, well, let's get this first down and save our defense a little bit, give them a little bit more time here on the sidelines. See, Kate Pennington, the junior out of Troy, Alabama, has checked in at the tailback. He's number 40. He's got the ball for the first time this year and squirms forward to what looks to be a Tiger first down. Well, Anthony, Anthony Poindexter was just right up inside right away here. The safety watching just he doesn't care about pass or play action. He's just going to get in there and try to move the pile back. And Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, told me, he said, when he hears the teams are going to run the football, he gets excited because everybody throws the ball anymore. It's basketball and grass. This guy is a pile mover. Auburn gets its first first down of the first quarter. On the last play of the first 15 minutes, we're scoreless on the plane. Two top 25 teams showing top 25 defenses in the first quarter. Virginia nothing, Auburn nothing. War Eagles six. Looking on here at Auburn. After their first first down of the game, the Tigers continue the drive from their own 39. <laughs> Lear to the air. A balloon thrown up for Karsten Bailey. Well covered by Adrian Burnham. Here are the numbers after the first 15 minutes. Defenses dominate. Just three first downs. Auburn just 22 yards. You see per play it was slow going for the Tigers. I'd say a draw in the first quarter because Virginia had chances for field position, didn't take advantage. Their offense has struggled just as much as Auburn's offense has. There was a flag thrown on that play. Against the Tigers. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat the down. Spot of the foul was three yards behind where Terry Bowden's team snapped it. So they're going to have second and more than 20. Now this puts you in a predicament. Now this is this is a draw down or a screen screen down here. You don't want a, a young quarterback putting it up here inside the 30-yard uh, line. So I, I would expect a run right here. Leard said he's been ready to take this job since the final gun went of the Peach Bowl win against Clemson. In the locker room at the Georgia Dome, he said, hey, I don't care if somebody comes in and pushes me. I'm the Auburn quarterback, and he's been thinking that way for seven months. Now he's got to prove it. Deflected, but it ends up in Bailey's hands. They make up some of the 23 they had to go. Wow, and everybody on that sideline of Auburn's heart just jumped a little bit with that deflection that they may have had a pick, but uh, they completed the ball to Karsten Bailey. Here you see the throw. 
and it's Wally Rayner. The linebacker had a shot at intercepting it, but Karsten Braley brought it in. If he would have been a half second slower on his read to he get out the back it. out of the backfield, he'd he have had the our first zone. score. That's right. <laughs> Second, about nine for Auburn. Lear, change in the play. And Pennington pays for it. Monsanto Pope, the freshman out of Hopewell, Virginia, got in there and Caused the five-yard loss. Well, Monsanto Pope got the uh, uh, got the checkoff because he <laughs> he beat the checkoff in the backfield and made this play. Uh, you like the fact that Ben Leard's going to check off, but uh, not a good checkoff right there. The third long yardage. Monsanto Pope just roared and nobody blocked him. Good-looking freshman adding some depth to that defensive line that is very active for Virginia. They were tough to run against last year. Ranked 21st in the country in run defense. Well, Heath Evans, the fullback, comes out to the near side on third and 14. Blitz picked up by Pennington. Big ball for Clifton Robinson. First down, Tigers. Tim Stroll, number 21, got beat by Clifton Robinson. And what Rick Lance chose to do was to come after Ben Leard here. Linebackers coming right here. And he's picked up good pass protection. You see, now they give some time for Ben Leard, and he kind of throws shot, puts the ball out there. But Clifton Robinson, it's right on the money. And the confidence of Ben Leard has to be helped with this throw. Robinson averaged 13 yards a catch last year. That one was worth 41. And now Auburn is threatening for the first time tonight. Leard back to the air, feeling confident, but overthrows Eric Lowe, the senior receiver. Actually threw it behind him. Well, that's a Damian Craig play that the uh, fans are so used to seeing here at Auburn. But you can see right now, I think he's settled down a little bit. Uh, his mom writes him a note before every game that he's ever played, starting in grade school, and she puts the initials at the bottom. DYP, do yourself proud. And he was talking about to you yesterday how he wishes the time would go by faster, he said, because I'm so anxious to get in this ball game. And I think he's at home now a little bit. He was telling his teammates the last few days on the elevator, hey, guys, 72 hours till the game. And they're looking at him like, settle down, relax, don't peek. He's done fine here in the first quarter plus. Pennington couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. You see that Virginia defense in their athletic linebackers. They had great linebackers a couple of years ago. Those guys left, but this group's starting to pick it up a little bit, and the secondary helping out as well. Well, I think you make a good point. Sharper and Ferrier were the two linebackers a couple of years ago. And Rick Lance told me they went to Michigan, they had that real close ball game and kind of lost it at the end. And this is a hot, sticky night here in Auburn. And you've got to do a good job of substituting, especially defensive linemen, because in the fourth quarter, you want to be able to chase the passer a little bit more. So Rick Lance knows he's got to substitute as much as he can tonight. First down awaits inside the 15. This is field goal range for the Tigers. of Robinson made the good play to get down here couldn't make the tough catch in traffic Dwayne Stukes the Virginia cornerback try to help make it tougher yeah and that was a catchable ball Mike uh, holding on Auburn so it's going to go back a little further but Clifton Robinson's got to make this catch now he threw it a little bit behind him but you got to be able to come back uh, and make that catch he just didn't bring it in and of course Dwayne Stukes giving him a little room and then he breaks on the football but that should be completion. But the holding penalty is going to negate it anyway. And that the problem here is takes holding out the field goal range. The spot of the foul is going to drag him all the way back to the 43. Where they were, if that pass was incomplete without the flag, would have been a 43-yard field goal attempt. And Terry Bowden was comfortable kicking field goals from that range with his yet unproven kicker, Baronis. But now we've got a long way to go. Backed up all the way to the 43, and it's third and 29.
Play clock has started, and it's down yeah, to they're, nine. They're There's the here. Timeout number two. Yeah, that's an inexperienced quarterback. We'll be using a couple of timeouts here in the first month of the season. We'll step aside. Classes don't start here at Auburn for another three weeks. The student's not on campus yet, <laughs> except for those guys who obviously are taking tough summer courses. <laughs> Still, it's a great crowd on hand. Auburn has a long way to go here, third and 29. The holding penalty took them out of field goal range. Lear flush and fires. Well, it's not often that you see Roman Nelson, a fullback, as the man in the end zone trying to catch the deep ball. Poindexter, not fool. It's fourth down. Well, well Mike, the, the thinking of Terry Bowden there is third and 29 is just to hang it out and throw it down the field. And they tried to go deep down the field. Here's great pressure on Ben Laird. He gets knocked down. Two good defensive backs. There's Poindexter making the play and also Number 21, Tim Spruill. Spruill. Here's Zills for his fourth punt tonight. Thomas Jones awaiting again. The man who's replacing Jared Holmes has done a very nice job. Caught on the fly at the 11. Brooks fakes to Womack. Throws to the tight end. Billy Baber, the sophomore, with a good first down pickup. Well, Billy Baber came in last year when Casey Crawford was hurt and played it quite a bit for uh, this Virginia football team. And Mike, uh, Virginia misses a little bit Jermaine Crowell. He was their leading receiver last year. He caught 53 passes. And the receivers are, I don't know, they're, they're a question mark. And that's why you're seeing Casey Crawford and Billy Baber more of the passing offense. In George Welsh's 17 years, the tight ends led his, his team in receiving three of those 17 years, so he knows how to get the ball to tight end. That's a lot when you think about it. Three times the tight end, the leading pass catcher. To the ground with Womack. He gets a couple. Second down coming up. Second and nine for Brooks. Well read off the corner by Antoine Nolan, the consistent junior right cornerback in Brother Oliver's defense. Yeah, they, they brought Antoine, Antoine Nolan from the right side. They just put him on the line of scrimmage, and I don't think Aaron Brooks would like this play. He probably should have gotten out of this play and uh, checked into something else. But you see Nolan coming from the outside makes the hit on this play. Virginia now, you... you they have to get this third down play. Now, they, they've got to rest their defense a little bit. Third down conversions can sometimes be a misleading stat, depending on the distance, but Virginia, they haven't gotten it done tonight. And they've been in third and long a lot, too. And Brooks needs to take time out. Blake Clock was down to one, and he just beat the flag. George Welsh's experienced quarterback not able to move the Cavaliers in the first 20 minutes tonight. The Tiger defense has answered the call. Most opportunities tonight. They've got another third and long against the Virginia offense. Out of the gun, Brooks. Flushed, but has space. Where will they spot it? Short of the first down. Good speed from the secondary. Nolan and Bray. Well, Nolan and uh, Bray really came up fast, but uh, Aaron Brooks has got to reach out for that. He's got to try to pick that first down up. It's going to be very close. About a half yard short. Less than that, about four links short. Ball is at the Virginia 35, and the Cavs will kick. You don't have much choice here. Aaron Brooks pulls the ball down, and here's what I'm talking about is he knows where that stick is. He's got to reach that football out and try to pick up that first down. Nolan and Bray both with good closing speed. Uh, George Welsh figuring that his defense is playing very well, and unless he chooses to fake a kick, and that's not George Welsh. Uh, I think they'll punt the football and try to play the field position more. 
Two teams tonight, nine possessions, ninth punt coming. While Keith Cooper back to receive the kick from Donald Scott. We play in the NCAA basketball tournament at Division Three Catholic. Left there, walked on here as a punter. His dad was a football player at Marshall. A lazy kick that Cooper fair catches. The drive will start at the 29. Well, Cooper has been moved to wide receiver as part of the shuffling they've had to do after a tough offseason. Takeo Spikes left for the NFL draft. Martavius Houston dismissed from the team for repeated team rules violations. Robert Baker was dismissed after his arrest for cocaine trafficking. He's serving a 15-year prison sentence here in Alabama. And then two starting offensive linemen, Dunnigan and Mears, left the team at the start of this summer for personal reasons. Kind of lost the love of football. One guy showed up out of shape. There are a lot of missing pieces for Terry Bowden's team that comes in still with high expectations. Right, they've got a solid defense, and that, that they're going to try to win with defense till their offense comes along. And, of course, Damian Craig is now in the NFL on the practice squad of the Carolina Panthers. Demontre Carter back in the backfield. Stretches forward for a few yards. Mike, a couple years ago when Damian Craig was here and he was a sophomore, Terry Bowden brought him in in goal line situations and several different, uh, they had scripted some series for him to come in and they got him experienced. And uh, Ben Leard now, here's a quarterback that comes in. They, he didn't do the same thing with him. I, I gave him a lot of credit. He, he took it off his father who used to do that at Florida State. But he said when we talked about it yesterday, he says, I'm trying to win games last year and I didn't get the opportunity to get Ben Leard in as much as I, I needed to so uh, thus you got an inexperienced quarterback coming into the first ball game running back rusty williams set up as a wide receiver here flag is down oh thrown into heavy traffic marquise cooper took a pop from wally rayner lucky not to get it intercepted and we'll check the flag Oof. dangerous place to throw the ball Yeah, you don't want to lead the receiver into a safety. Uh, otherwise, you better have another receiver in the bullpen because he's <laughs> going to get uh, taken care of. As a quarterback, you get, you can't lead him into somebody. And then Laird smiled again, and so he knows the mistakes he made. He made on that play. That's tough for Cooper, too. This is a converted tailback who's out at wide receiver. Seeing more and more tailbacks go to wide receiver, and I think the reason for that is in high school, if you have a quarterback, you usually don't have a receiver. If you have a receiver, you usually don't have a quarterback. So a lot of the best athletes go to tailback in high school, and when they come to college, like Marquise Cooper, they have to be moved outside because you have a lack of receivers. Clifton Robinson in as Cooper takes a breather. Roman Nelson. Into block. We actually got the handoff this time and stopped rather easily. Maurice Anderson, the right tackle, along with Rayner again on the stop. Well, Jerry Punch is getting a better view down there on the field, but it looks to me like the defensive linemen and linebackers from Virginia are excited that somebody's trying to run the ball uh, against them. And I think the, on, the, on the other side, I think the Auburn defense feels the same way. Uh, you look at the middle of the line here, just to give to Nelson, number 38, and there's no place to go. I mean, they, they just stop in everything. Mar Maurice Anderson, on the first one to make the tackle. And last year, Auburn fans said, run, Auburn, run. So they're, they're seeing uh, what they wanted last year uh, come true tonight because they're trying to run the football. 13 runs, nine yards. They run a pass for the first down. The flag was thrown down as the play clock ran out on Lear. Griffith and Anderson couldn't hear the whistle. Delay of game, offense, five yards. The problem with that is you ran the play and they know what you were trying to do, so now you got to switch out of that. That was your play that you practiced all week in third and three. And now you're backed up again a little bit, so you got to get some different personnel in there and change the play. You've had to do this. Go in with a quarterback where you didn't know what you were going to get out of him. You saw him in practice. You knew he, you kind of got him ready, but you didn't know what was going to happen when the lights went on. Did you coach differently in those situations? You, you, you coach conservatively, but eventually you got to take the wheels off and you got to let him play. But tonight you're trying to win this game, so your defense may be able to win this game for you. Here it up top. First downs at the 40. He's got Robinson.
Robinson again. Well, Clifton Robinson has come up with some big catches. This one across midfield. First down, Tiger. And the other thing, Mike, you may see the making of a quarterback tonight. You know, in high school, he threw for 25 touchdowns. He was recruited by Tennessee, by Georgia, by Auburn. Now, here he makes a nice play fake. He gets good pass protection again, steps up in the pocket, and makes this throw to Clifton Robinson. So that was a nice pass and nice footwork by Ben Laird. And that, that was nice. Robinson's had the big catches from Lear thus far, who became very close with Damian Craig. They go to meetings together. They drive back from meetings together. They talk, they hang out. Craig has called him this week and said, hey, relax. You know what to do. Numbers so far, so good. Keith Evans, the Richard Preston fullback, couldn't hang on. No, I think what you'll see here, Mike, is because of the pass protection, just thinking about what's developing this ball game, Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, is probably going to try to heat him up a little bit more. Now, they've got good pass protection, and it looks like you can't give him some time because he's starting to find some open receivers. So you want to get him back to where they don't want to throw a little bit. So you may start trying to put a little bit more pressure on number 14, Ben Laird. Bring a safety, bring a linebacker, try to get somebody in his face. To me, Rayner, Wally Rayner's brother, younger brother's a reserve linebacker, getting taped on the sidelines. Demontre Carter. It'll be about third and five. Well, yards are hard to come by out there, and Demontre Carter, who uh, Terry Bowden feels like is going to be a very good tailback for him, in high school, Mike, he rushed for 462 yards and five touchdowns in one game on just 12 carries. Now, I don't care if you play Little Sisters of the Poor. That's a pretty good outing. So you know he's a very capable running back, and they like him very, very much here at Auburn. Strong back. Got stronger, added some weight. He lifts off. Evans will be the lone back here for 35. Throwing the ball a lot more in the last two series. Intercepted by Poindexter. Oh, the first thing wasn't there. He came to the second one and overthrew it, and that's what happened. Well, Jimbo Fisher is a quarterback coach said, trust your eyes. But you know what I think happened here? His receiver got cut off. Uh, what I was watching, somebody steps in the way of the receiver and he doesn't continue on his path he's eyeing up the play and there's the interception by poindexter but it looked like the receiver got cut off Rusty the williams is coming over coming over and then just wasn't there timing wise no and uh that's the turnover rick lance was looking for for his virginia defense and the all-american anthony poindexter makes the play adds to his great statistical career Auburn defense put on the spot again. Jones gets it to the outside, but can't get past Larry Crasher, the sophomore. Jerry Punch. Little wonder why Anthony Poindexter is such a great football player. His mom and dad are incredible goal role models for this young man. Now, both John and Lois Poindexter come and watch him play every single week. They are here tonight sitting in the stands. John Poindexter out of Forest, Virginia. There's John out there in the middle of your screen and his wife Lois right beside him. He works 16 hours a day, eight hours a day at a hardware store, gets off at 5.30 in the evening, goes to a second job and works at the landscaper at night. He has done that for 20 years. That's the work ethic that has made Anthony Poindexter a great football player. Second down, Brooks. Stayed inbounds. The Auburn sidelines wanted the grounding call. It was not coming. You know, Mike, it looks like a reverse roll. It looks like Aaron Brooks has rattled a little bit. I'm almost not sure he didn't step out of bounds before he threw that football. Uh, they flush him out. They get pressure again with a corner blitz. Uh, Marcus Washington should have made the play. Now let's see his feet here. Yeah, we can't tell, but he threw the ball away. He has to throw it a little bit sooner than that, and then closer to that line to get rid of that football. Well, they got pressure on Brooks last year and rattled him a bit. Doing it again tonight. This time, first down. That tight end, Casey Crawford, the junior, is really, really good. To the 39, they picked up. 
16 yards. Mike, he's a good story. Casey Crawford, he injured and broke his leg last year in the Wake Forest ball game. And uh, I talked to him the other day at practice. Here he is lined up right here. He's going to work up the football field. And after he broke the leg and he, he missed football a little bit, he said, you know, it was like a blessing in disguise because he said, I was going at football like it was a job. And once I was, it was taken away from me, I'm having more fun now and enjoying it more because I know it can go at any time. So an outstanding young man. His second catch on that play, Antoine Nolan came off injured for the Tigers. Brooks tried to test that corner, the good coverage, but breaking free. The Cavaliers will get on the board with a touchdown. Kevin Coffey, the other wide receiver. 61 yards. And Mike, what made that play was the strong arm of Aaron Brooks because he was looking to his left deep down the field. Bates the ball. Now he's looking his left, trying to find Wilkins, the receiver. He comes back to the other side to Kevin Coffey, and he shows you the strength of his arm. Now, just a bad play by Brad Ware. He underplayed the throw, and Kevin Coffey gets in the end zone. And, Mike, what that means is now you're putting a little pressure, more pressure on that Auburn offense to, to open it up a, even a little bit more. So Leard is going to take the field with a deficit after Coffey, the sophomore out of Cleveland, Ohio, who caught one touchdown last year as his longest reception as a Cavalier and the first touchdown of the season for Virginia. Todd Braverman's first ever kick is off the upright and no good. So the brand new kicker at Virginia, who's waited for that moment all week, Comes up just a little bit off the mark. It was the quick gun of Brooks to Kevin Coffey. The sophomore takes it to the house and puts the Cavaliers on top by six. Well, Virginia finally has broken through in this defensive battle. Their offense coming up with the bigger big play. Kevin Coffey's 61-yard touchdown reception. There's one other pass play to gain yardage. 16 yards to the tight end, Crawford. They lost a yard on a run. But Coffey takes it to the end zone. And Virginia leads. David Green picking off for the Cavs. Clifton Robinson for Auburn gets it over the 20. Mike back to the touchdown and Aaron Brooks. And the, the better quarterback is play faking right here. Now he's trying to go to Terrence Wilkins on the left corner. He's looking for him now. Watch him turn his head now. Now his head and his eyes are going to come around to try to find Kevin Coffey over here. Now see his eyes now. He, his head's on a swivel. He cocks that football and throws it and shows you his arm strength. And there's number 27, Brad Ware, that just got caught looking at the quarterback's eyes a little bit the other way, and he froze a little bit, underplayed it. Great look, guys. You can see the timing of coming to that second receiver worked perfectly for Virginia. Now Leard and the Tigers operate from a deficit. And a first down pass to Karsten Bell. Ten yards for the senior, caught 53 passes last year. Well, when you get a score, that's what you force the other offense to do to answer. What you want to happen anytime you play in a ball game, when a team scores, you want to be able to come right back and answer the score. Here's the footwork of Ben Leard. As he sets up on a five-step drop, he'll stop. Now he should be ready to throw. Here, Car Karsten Bailey working over the middle. Safe throw, Mike. Just a little throw over the middle. Choice route, uh, five yards deep. Here it is thrown into this game in the first half. Tailback, true freshman, Michael Burks. And they like him a lot here at Auburn. First touch as a college player. About three yards to the 34. <laughs> First freshman gets on the field at this place, you know he's pretty good. Yeah, he really is. He, he committed to Mississippi State, and Pete Jenkins, the uh, coach, the defensive line coach who goes to Louisiana, talked him back out of it. He's a New Orleans guy in uh, Rummel High School, and uh, he's a very confident guy. He's told everybody that he's in, expected to come up here and play as a freshman. In that New Orleans area where Peyton Manning goes back, where he lived and played his high school football, and Kevin Falk. Burks did some work with the same trainer just to try to get physically ready for the jump high school to college. And he made it without red shirting. Little option out of Lear. 
Johnny Rainer sticks it. Speaking of some shots. And here's another guy with some wallop. The linebacker, middle linebacker, number 44, Wally Rainer, makes that hit on Ben Laird. First time they showed a little option. And Rainer says, I've seen that before. Here's Rowley. Out of the backfield. He comes. He takes his shot. This one from Byron Thweet, the sophomore linebacker. Mike, I heard that one up here. <laughs> and felt wow. it, too. Yeah, I did feel that one. Byron Thweet, <laughs> a great hit. I'm telling you, that's one that'll get the defensive players excited. If you're excited now, you're going to be excited after he lays the wood to Heath Evans. Wow. The reaction of the umpire who didn't see it but heard it. He kind of just got his body all tight to do. Sophomore made impact last year as the second leading tackler on the Cavs defense. Freshman Burke has the first down. Two carries in his career, two first downs. And the fans react every time he gets the ball. They read everything written about the Tigers here, and they know the 21 is supposed to be one of those special guys. Well, Rick Trickett, who's the offensive line coach, told me, he said he can be a special back, and he lowers his shoulder, and he picks up that first down. Now, when you look at this offensive line, he's found Geno James, 6'4", 298. They're 6'3", 312 at the guards, uh, 317 at the other tackle. So you ought to be able to run the football behind that mammoth offensive line. It's an offensive line that lost three players from the start of practice. First down, near to the air again in this drive. But brought down by that Virginia defense. You know, the thing that uh, the Auburn offensive line does, and many, not many teams in the country do, they flip-flop their offensive line. So what I mean by that is sometimes Geno James could be on the right side. And He's the tight tackle, and then when the tight end goes the other way, he has to go the other side. Now, you see Geno James now, so he's been asked, he's asked to play both sides. Here, Patrick Kearney, a former lacrosse player, who uh, was a walk-on in Virginia, just threw him outside and made that tackle. Eight sacks for Kearney last year. The lacrosse guys must be tough. <laughs> he's one of those big stick defenders that you don't come in there as a little attack man and try to score. Virginia bring the cross program. Kearney played the national championship game two years ago. Oh, Leard in trouble, and Rainer was right around the ball. I think they're going to give him an interception here. No way, no, no way. Okay. Late, uh, late call. They're going to talk it over, but the, the Virginia guys, right away, you want your guys to point the other way like they got it. So show confidence to the officials, but I don't think they're going to give this, and I don't, and I don't think they're was an interception. Have some guts. Say it the first time you saw it. There's no way. Oh, yeah. it, it was the not. ball hit the okay. ground. It is incomplete. <laughs> I meant for me, not for oh, you. Oh, okay. There was no way on the planet he caught that ball. It was a good try from Welsh's experience. Hey, you got to be a little actors out there. You know, you tell them, you know, anytime a fumble, no matter whether you got it or not, point like you got it. It's Wally Rayner again trying to go for that interception. He caught it on like uh, about two hops. Come on, that's not even close to trying no, to steal one. No, but you always got to do it. You never know when the <laughs> official might be blocked out. And blocked out, you know, you never know. <laughs> FDA across midfield to the Virginia 44 for a first down. Leard running out of time. Got to do something. Fumble. And Virginia's got it. Oh, now they lost it. Rainer had it between his legs. He's going to pick up and walk away with it. And they do recover the fumble. Boy, Maurice Anderson just poured down on Ben Leard. And that's a mistake. But again, inexperience. You, did, you didn't get him on the field last year. He, he doesn't have any experience. So he's got to learn on the job. And, and Terry Bob knows that. But he just waits too long here. This play, he avoids the sack. He's got to feel the blind side. He fumbles the football. Maurice Anderson with a good hit. Now, when I was coaching Mike, this is a kind of play, sudden change, where you think your defense might be a little down coming on the field, that you might want to challenge him right here and try to catch him a little down. Ben Laird talking to Jimbo Fisher, the quarterback coach. 
Virginia starts in great field position. They started at the Auburn 44 earlier, went three and out. That one went nowhere. The intended pass for Antoine Wolman. All that with Chris Lee and Kirk at halftime. Brooks comes down to Thomas Jones. Yards short of the first down. Casher made the stop. Clock continues to run. Quickly, Jerry. Guys, on the play prior to the Virginia pass and touchdown a moment ago, on the field, Antoine Nolan, her number 13, he and Brad Ware, number 27, ran together on the play field and hit their heads. Nolan came off the field. He basically was very, very foggy. There's Nolan there. And, of course, Ware was also foggy on the field. Timeout, Virginia. 18 seconds left, Jerry. They have a third down when we come back. The champions of the SEC West last year, one point shy of beating Tennessee in the conference title game. Right now trailing Virginia 6-0. Cavs wasted a few seconds there, but got the timeout with 18 seconds left. Mike, you have to have two calls right here because if you pick up the first down, the clock's going to change, and the clock's going to stop until they change the uh, down marker. So you've got some time to have the second call ready to be lined up. To the air. The tight end, Crawford, gets the first down at the 25. 11 seconds left. Now they got time to, to, to get set up because they got the second play already called. Good play fake by Aaron Brooks. And now the pass to Casey Crawford wide open out of the back, out of the tight end position. Brad Ware made the tackle. They still have one timeout left. Stops it with seven seconds left. Now, Mike, you talked about they, they I know you're shaking your head now. You they, you talked about the they squandered a few seconds there a little bit ago, which I agree, but right. now that's pretty good use of the clock right here. Sure. Two plays sure. and then kill the clock. Now you gotta kill it a little quicker, but now you got time to take one shot into the end zone or, or get yourself in a position where you, you get your inexperienced field goal kicker a little bit closer. So that's what Sparky Woods, the offensive coordinator, is looking for right now. Maybe a shot in the end zone, but just let me get a little closer for my kicker. Tight formation here with seven seconds left. Get it to the middle of the field for the kicker. And they'll run it down and take a timeout. They better take it pretty soon. The, the home clock ran, and did they not call timeout? Well, if they didn't, that's, uh, that's a uh, fundamental oh. mistake there. Wow. That is a big mistake right there. They didn't get the timeout called. They set up, they, they ran the play to get it in the middle of the field to get the field goal kicked. And now obviously, you know, everybody's got to yeah. look and just everybody's make a timeout right call. His head. Say, hey, timeout, timeout. And nobody oh, yeah. got there. That's a squandered opportunity. So let's watch as George Welsh walks off. What happens here? There's the knee. They should all be called timeout. Yep. Everybody called timeout. They're too slow. They're too lackadaisical in that thing. That's a great They're job by late. the officials. Great job by the officials because nobody called timeout. No, in a situation where they should have anticipated the call coming. And George is saying, you see, you practice all those situations. That's what makes you go to gray hair with a coach. You practice that all the time. That's why your hair is nice and dark that's right, right now, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> At the break, Virginia 6, Auburn nothing. All set for the second half. Virginia leading Auburn 6-0. Mike Tirico, Mike Godfrey. That was a disappointing end to the first half for Virginia, which didn't play well, got back in the game, had a chance to take a two-score lead, and then really a mental breakdown. Mike, a, a big mess up, and you watch now to see if it, it carries over into the third quarter for both the offense and the defense. So it's going to be interesting to see. Some of the big moments of that first half, that certainly has to be a, a big part of it. When you look at Auburn and Ben Leard, Overall, really not as, not as bad as it could have been. No, I thought Ben Laird played well in the first half, and I think Terry Bowden probably feels like he did a good job, and they got to run the ball a little bit better. And there's no doubt when you look at the rushing yardage for Auburn, 23 yards, and Virginia's facing the same thing. They only ran for 42 yards. A turnover, which didn't come back to Hanamo. The interception and the, the, the follow-up by Virginia just before half. Auburn kicks off to start the second half. Terrence Wilkins and Antoine Womack deep to receive for the Cavaliers. It 
was, as Chris said, 7 2 Auburn at the half last year. We had an explosive start to the third quarter. Touch back, Virginia ball at the 20. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Boy, at halftime, coming off the field, Virginia head coach George Welsh, very, very frustrated. He said they have practiced and practiced and practiced running the ball to the middle of the field, jumping up, and everybody on the team knows the call timeout, but no one did. Now, in this game of college football, any player on the field can signal timeout, and they will get it, but no one did, and the clock ran out. Now, he talked about needing to get his passing game in sync in the second half. He said, Doc, we cannot get the ball off. We are throwing the ball late. We are out of sync in our passing game, and it is disrupting our entire offense. We have got to change that in the second half. 76 yards on two pass plays. 50 the rest of the first half. Brooks starts the half to Thomas Jones. Thomas Jones gets seven to the 27. Let's go back if you weren't with us. Last play, first half. Well, that's what upsets you as a coach because your quarterback goes down. You have the set play call. Six seconds on the clock. Call timeout. Any one of you just call to make the timeout signal or a wake up, uh, a wake up call. But they're too lackadaisical in that play, and that's what upsets George Welsh because you practiced that, and they just lost track of the time. Second and three, the touchdown catch man, Coffee at the top of the screen, Jones, the leading returning rusher in the ACC, two carries, 11 yards, and a first down to start the third quarter. Well, this is the way you'd like to come out. You'd like your offense to respond because when you go in, and it's, it's like uh, when you go into the locker room, and it's depressing. You're ahead seven to nothing, but you or six to nothing, but you blew an opportunity. You can't carry it back out on the field. You got to leave that in the locker room, and you got to build on the third quarter. Don't want any letdowns. Last year, a younger, inexperienced Virginia team had missed opportunities, missed opportunities, and that's why they didn't beat Auburn. In many ways, they outplayed the Tigers in Charlottesville. Brooks backpedaling. Look for the tight end, Crawford, blanketed by Pink. They wanted a flag, it didn't come. Like good play action fake by Aaron Brooks, but he threw off his back foot. Didn't really follow through on the play. Uh, had Casey Crawford open. You know, watch uh, Aaron Brooks. Here's the good fake. He's, he's leaning back, Mike, and he's falling off, and uh, he really didn't have much on the ball. He's pretty well covered by Rob Pate, the safety. Sophomore safety, 6'3", 204. Brooks, 8 of 15, throwing the ball tonight. Second and ten, the Tigers rush four. First down would have been, but the ball dropped by Coffee. That was a good throw, good timing with Coffee. Everything but. Yeah, good protection, uh, good pass uh, route by Kevin Coffee. Came back to the football. A good throw by Aaron Brooks. Uh, should have been a completion, but it wasn't. Just dropped the football mm. right through his hands in front of Antoine Nolan. But that's a good sign for Virginia, the fact they're coming out and they're opening up a little bit more. Ahmad Hawkins, a third receiver, comes into the game. They've got Casey Crawford stood out a little bit. He'd be a likely target here. Essentially, four wide receivers for third down. There is Crawford. Good call, Coach. Crawford rumbles to the 45. That, that's an option play, Mike, and what I mean by that is the option of the receiver to go down 12 yards and to read the coverage, and he can move inside. I'm going to stop, try to stop this on the play, but as he goes down, now you see the defender went outside, so he's going to curl inside, so the quarterback knows he'll be inside. He leads him up the field. Nice pass reception, good field position, good throw by Aaron Brooks. Four catches on the night for Crawford who was emerging last year when he broke his leg in the game against Wake Forest. And is picking up 10 and a half months later right where he left off. Thomas Jones. Good little cute first down for Jones. Spilled by Jason Bray. Back to Dr. Jerry. 
Talking about the use of Casey Crawford, the tight end. You know, Virginia offensive coordinator Sparky Woods went down to the Carolina Panthers this past July and spent some time with Don Bro, who he coached with at the New York Jets. Now, Bro is a tight end coach for the Panthers and coaches all pro tight end Wesley Wall. What he and Bro talked about was ways of getting the football to their impressive tight end, Casey, Casey Crawford, which they wanted to use a lot during the early part of the season. And apparently, it's working tonight. Sparky Woods, the former South Carolina coach, in his second year of coordinating this Virginia offense, which emerged towards the end of last season. Good drive going here. Jones can't get to the outside. Marcus Washington, they've got experience at the outside linebacker spot. Washington, the junior, went to high school right here in Auburn, makes the stop. And look at Ohio beating North Carolina State now by 10 in the third quarter. If you watch scores go by and Arizona Hawaii comes up on the deuce with Larry Beal and Rodney Gilmore in about an hour and 10 minutes go back to what Jerry Punt said uh, college coaches visit pro coaches all the time and other college staff to try to find new wrinkles to put in in the offseason you know you got a good tight end go to somebody who knows what to do with a tight end that be grounding yes it will be Brian Taylor caused the pressure there was nobody in the neighborhood well there was a receiver out there number seven Terrence Wilkins uh, you know, again he's he's way out there but I think that's what Aaron Brooks was trying to do with his footwork he just short armed it a little bit I, I'm not so sure if this is grounding now I, I'm gonna have to He's trying to get away. He's trying to. The ball came out as a knuckle, but there is right. a receiver out there, there. Terrence Wilkins. Mm -hmm. nope, they're going to call him for grounding. It's, it's an ACC crew. An SEC crew last year in Charlottesville. That's not a good sign for the offensive coaches when the head coach puts a headset on either. <laughs> you know, he's, all of a sudden, he's going to get involved now. But I, I, I like this drive by Virginia. They, they come out, and you look at Auburn. They're trying to put heat on Aaron Brooks. They've only sacked him once, though, because he's a big target, big frame, 6'4", 202. Four sacks, part of 13 knockdowns last year by Auburn. So they are getting some pressure on Brooks again this year. Third and a quarter of the field. First down waits at the Tiger 24. Accepted by Haven Fields, who was thinking about tying the game. Well, you know what happens? The, the, the key play when they tried to go to Crawford over the middle, now your defense knows you're going to try to get to the tight end. Just like Jared Punch said, they studied getting the ball to tight end. Now, defensive guys know to try to take the tight end away. Haven Fields broke right in front of the ball, should have intercepted the play and uh, forcing this punt by Virginia. Scott's sixth of his college career. Now Karsten Bailey, the wide receiver, is the lone deep man. He did not return punch last year. High and short. Good job by Jason Bray as the ball was knuckling toward him. After a 36-yard punt, it's first down Auburn. Leard will take over at his own 15. Haven Fields nearly saw a little bit of the sweet part of the campus. The end zone almost had an interception to tie the game. And the Auburn defense holds. And now the offense starts at its own 15. With the freshman, Michael Burks, not able to find any real estate. Here's Dr. Jerry. At halftime, Terry Bowden talked to his team about how impressed he was with the fact that the offense was on the field for 17 of 30 minutes in the first half. He said, guys, if we're going to be a running team, we have got to run the football. They are not going to motion the fullback as much. The reason being, with the motion of the fullback, the defensive front moves, and the offensive linemen have trouble picking up who they're supposed to block. So if they leave the fullback in one place, the defensive front will not move, and they'll have a better chance to block it up front. They want to establish a run early here in the second half. Including sacks, that total, but still, Auburn still having the problem from last year. Not able to run the ball effectively. 
Lear's pass for Robinson, incomplete. And even if he caught it, wouldn't have had much because Wally Rayner was in an Auburn jersey again tonight, Mike. Well, Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, said Wally Rayner improved more than any player he's ever coached. Watch him go right behind the center here and make the tackle on the tailback. He's just got a good nose for the football. Watch tapes of Mike Singletary, uh, old tapes of the linebacker. You see him scrape off and make the play on the linebacker. He said, I watched Mike Singletary so much, he said, and then I want to tackle my t television. He said, I got <laughs> so excited. I mean, this is an excited football player right here. 213 tackles uh, last year. Just an outstanding player. Preseason, first team all ACC, adding to the Virginia burgeoning linebacker tradition. Third and ten, deep in his own territory, whistles before the throw. The play clock ran out. Mike, you're talking about the linebackers that Virginia's putting out. They're fast becoming modern linebacker U. They have 12 current NFL linebackers. And number 44, Wally Reiner, uh, will be uh, another one that'll come along. Dead ball, delay of game by the offense. There is no play, five yards. See, as, as you get more experience in the quarterback position, you're going to see that to either call timeout, uh, the delay in the play. And, and I, I feel for Terry Bob tonight because, you know, he's, he's got a quarterback there and he's trying to call the game uh, the, to try to work w within his situation. But you're seeing on the job training tonight by Ben Laird. And I, and I think he's played fairly well. There's got to be a part of Ben Laird that's saying, why me? It's the first time. <laughs> that Auburn has hosted a ranked team oh, in the yeah. season opener. And this is a good defensive football team. Make no mistake about that. They'll be as good a defense as they play this year, except maybe for Florida. Third and 15, Rusty Williams in the backfield. Laird lays it out there. Poindexter from the safety said, no way will Karsten Daly get behind me. It's another punt for Auburn. The linebacker, Anthony Poindexter, a linebacker lined up 12 yards deep, and he makes some plays. Number 35, Here's the play. Carson Bailey trying to get him the ball deep, and there's number three, the All-American, Anthony Poindexter. Jeremy Zills to kick to Thomas Jones. Poindexter came in for a look. Affected the punt. Well, that's a great job right there catching that ball, Mike, because anything can happen when it hits that ground. Aaron Brooks tonight, uh, he's had his moments. Uh, his offense struggled a little bit because the receiver, new position. You're going to see this first play. Uh, Josh loss in the tackle. Once you come down like that, somebody's going to come back the outside to, to block Leonardo Carson. And now watch Aaron Brooks. They, they've been after him all night. He's looking for Terrence Wilkins. Now watch him wheel his eyes around and strong enough arm to get the ball out to Kevin Coffey for the only score in this football game. A good job of keeping your head on the swivel as a quarterback. Impressive numbers again for Brooks. Similar to the numbers he had all November last year. Looking over the middle again for the tight end. This time it's Faber instead of Crawford. The tight ends have been terrific for Virginia tonight. Well, I don't know how much money they spent going to Carolina Panthers, but it was well worth it because they picked up some nice things here to try to get the tight end. That's number 87, Billy Faber, just working down the middle against two deep. What, ha what you have is two safeties on the hash. He read two deep. He got the ball to Billy Faber right down the middle. The people spread out sideways and in that middle with the tight end between the linebackers and the DBs. And there's an area of about 14 to 18 yards to get in that football, and he did it. Jones stumbled as he tried to make the cut back. Jimmy Brumbaugh with the last hand on him when he was on the ground. Well, what a great story Jimmy Brunball is. Now, they, he got hurt last year in the Georgia game, and they didn't know how much he'd play. And I, I think the best compliment I heard of Jimmy Brunball, and this Auburn coach has told me this, Mike DeBose, the Alabama coach, was watching a game in the afternoon one day, Auburn play. They must have played at night. And he said about Jimmy Brumball, he said he plays the game the way it should be, and there's not, not a higher compliment that can come from your competitor as a head coach than about Jimmy Brumball. Knee surgery 10 months ago, a six inch long north-south scar on that left knee. Back on the field, helping the Auburn defense make it tough for Brooks, who takes a timeout as the play clock 
was running down. Virginia in the red zone, in the lead. Can they cash in this time? Virginia has the ball at the Auburn 14, trying to add to a six-point lead. Brooks has been effective as a runner and a thrower tonight. He's looked poised in the pocket. He's done a real good job getting the ball to the tight ends. Sparky Woods uh, calling this tight end's number tonight. Six of the ten completions to Crawford and Bamber. Always look for a tight end in the red zone. They give to Womack and Antoine, the sophomore out of Hampton, Virginia, has spilled by Haven Fields. Boy, good tackle by Haven Fields because there was nobody outside of him if he misses that tackle, and he got him around the hips and held on and made that tackle. Read the draw all the way. Number 54, see, he sees a draw now. Now he steps up. Nobody blocks him. He's able to make the tackle on Thomas Jones. In the two deep, there are three redshirt freshmen at the inside linebacker spot. Fields is the junior. The one experienced guy has made a couple they, of they, big plays. They don't have enough players on the field. Auburn only has 10 players on the field. No, they got... No, they've got 11 now. Brooks finds Jones. Thomas Jones to the seven. That's going to be two yards short of a first down. That's a good tackle again by Larry Casher, uh, saving the first down. I think you got to kick the field goal here. George knows the points are going to be hard to come by in this football game. Aaron Brooks getting the ball out to his tailback, Thomas Jones, who Sparky Woods, the offensive coordinator, says has, has as good a hands as any wide receiver we have. Well, here's Braverman, whose first attempt in his college career was an extra point that hit off the upright. And replacing John Allen Roberts, former soccer player. Kick that one with confidence. 24-yard field goal adds to the Virginia lead. It's now 9 to nothing. To have a field goal kick, you need a good long snapper. It's going to get that ball back. There's the kick. There's a good laces turn. And the ball right down the middle. Dylan Taylor, the long snapper. Jimmy Brumbaugh, the man from the knee surgery, back on the football field, knows the defense did the job. Was hoping they could rattle just a little bit more that confident rookie place kicker, but this time he made it with plenty of room to spare. You no, know, you opened you opened this game and you talked about the sweat and the weights and the lifting and the running. Mm -hmm. And that's why all the body language, because they know how much they have invested. And you only get one chance at Virginia. You don't play them twice like you do in basketball. You only get one time. So uh, they got to make every moment count out here. David Green kicking to Clifton Robinson. They need a big play. Robinson spins free to the 35. A little operating room for Lear. Well, you called it, Mike. They did need something on special teams, and uh, they've got decent field position now. Now, here's where Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, uh, it's Clifton Robinson's going to return this kick, and he gets a good return, a missed tackle. Special teams, you always worry about special teams the first game. You know, more games are won and lost in special teams the first week than any other week during the season. But now Rick Lance is looking for a turnover from his defense. He got him behind 9-0. They have to open it up a little bit. Now you're looking for the turnover. This is the first time Auburn started a possession beyond its own 30. Cleared up top. Lost it. Turnover for Virginia. Monsanto Pope recovers the fumble. See, when the game changes, when you get up more than one score, now you force that other guy to sit on the other sideline to up the ante a little bit. And now you got the chance for the rush, you got the chance for the sack, you got the chance for the interception, and of course the fumble. Monsanto Pope, and again, give credit to Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, and the coaches, the defensive coaches, because they're keeping defensive linemen fresh. They're doing a good job substituting. And it's a good hit, good fumble, and now Virginia's offense has to make hay with this ball. Now Auburn's defense really has to come up big here now. They can't afford to fall more behind uh, Mike. Michael Lubomir Stamanich helps force it. 
The quick handoff to Jones to the 19-yard line. Penalty marker down on the play. Mike, what happened on that play was Auburn was in the huddle. They didn't get out of the huddle, and that's what I talk about sudden change sometimes. Uh, you, you know, you want to hit them quickly. Virginia actually snapped the ball, and Auburn was not in position. They're talking about somebody wasn't ready on the play. It was the offense. Did Virginia snap too quickly even for its own good, perhaps? Illegal shift on the offense. All 11 men were not simultaneously set for one second. Five yards, repeat the day. What, what happened on that, Mike, was I think what, what Virginia was trying to do was get to the line of scrimmage right away and call the play and go before Auburn could get set. But obviously, all their players weren't set. Well, Brumbaugh and this defense have answered the call most of the night. They're playing good enough to win, but maybe they need to make something happen. Nothing for Jones. But just what you said, Mike, they have to make something happen. They have to get a score. They've got to be responsible for getting the ball back now. Jimmy Brumball, number 96, is going to show you why he's a two-time All-SEC All-Conference player. Wow. One time he made it at nose tackle, and the next year they moved him out defensive end. He made it there, too. He took on the block, and he shed the block and made the tackle on Thomas Jones. He's given great effort. He knows they have to make something happen on defense. Key possession of the game here with Virginia leading by nine. Brooks caught his own pass and lost yardage. Well, did he eventually drop it on the ground? Is that what they're saying? No. Well, that would be a big help because you wouldn't lose the yards. No, they may be giving him the catch. That's correct. That can happen. We saw Brad Johnson in the NFL do that for a touchdown last year. Yeah, Aaron Brooks going back, and Bill Oliver's putting pressure on blitzing the linebacker from the outside. I, mean, I don't think he caught it, but they're giving him credit for the catch. Almost an interception. What he did most of all was he kept Auburn from getting that football. Well, that's a big difference. That's yeah. an 11-yard difference there with the ruling of a catch. I like the way Auburn's playing defense right now. They are a team that they're a defensive team that knows they've got to draw a line to Sam right now. They cannot let another score. Demetrius Dotson, sophomore receiver in the game for the first time. Brooks over the middle. Terrence Wilkins breaking free. To the 22, he's about five yards short of a first down, but in field goal range. Yeah, you don't like to compare anybody, but Cordell Stewart played at Colorado and uh, really had a great college career. And then went with the Steelers, and they moved him. They did a great job when they moved him to wide receiver, eventually the quarterback. This guy, Aaron Brooks, you're seeing tonight, is the same kind of player. He's got a strong arm. Gets the ball to Terrence Wilkins. He's six foot four, four five forty. He can run. So uh, a lot of people are going to take a good look at him. He's got a very high release. Braverman from the right hash made a 24 yarder. This one's 39. No good. Well, there's nothing lonely in a kicker who, you know, when your team is doing well and he missed the extra point in a field goal. Especially in this game, which yeah. is all about the big guys on the line. It's a lonely night. Welcome back to Jordan Hare Stadium here in Auburn, Alabama, where the Cavaliers are up nine to nothing here in the third quarter. Now, some bad news for Auburn at halftime. Their redshirt freshman center, Mike Pasillo, out with a broken right foot, and also Markeith Cooper, a very valuable wide receiver, out for the rest of the game with a concussion. Guys, Jerry, thanks. Certainly a broken play there, and Leard had to take a shot. Flag is down. So Carl Levine is now the center he started the game NC State back to within three in Raleigh and we'll keep an eye on that through the fourth quarter hey Dead ball, State. false start on the offense five yards that's my team that's I where know. I went to school I they know. were winning Western Kentucky two winning that's good football the Ohio Valley Conference you can't have mistakes like this Mike you, know, you can't start five yards back uh, 
But Virginia's missed some opportunities here in the third quarter and uh, just before half. I'll say add the penalties, the backwards plays, and the yardage. Consider this, Virginia's three possessions this quarter. They got to the Auburn 36, the Auburn 7, the Auburn 22. And they only have three points to show for it. Laird had a knockdown, almost intercepted by Rayner. Donnie Green was in Laird's mug right away. Well, this is not a good sign if you're an Auburn fan because now Rick Lance is doing just what I thought he'd do. He's going to heat up Ben Laird now. He's not going to give him time to set and get his ball club back in this game. Number 44, Wally Rainier again. Uh, there's pressure from the other side. Uh, let's see who that is. It's Donnie Green, number 33. With, with some good pressure and holding on to the ankle and uh, a lot of people putting uh, hands in the face of Ben Lear. And 285 pounds of Maurice Anderson, number 85, from Blackstone, Virginia, falling on top of him. Uh, Rick Lance, the defense coordinator, feels like he can be a number one draft choice. Terry Bowden took calls for time. The play clock was down at one when the timeout was given. And the boos start to cascade from the fans here well, at Jordan Hare. They don't wait long. Wow. First game, you don't even get time to you work out the wrinkles. That's why the college basketball coaches, Pete Gillens and the uh, booth to the left, they've got it made. They got exhibition games and all that. <laughs> Four pass plays, and uh, the, where you go over 15 yards in his uh, pass completion, pass attempted, and uh, you need to get the defense off of you a little bit. Uh, but now, what has happened is they're just turning up the heat, pressing, pressing uh, Ben Leard with uh, pressure from the linebackers, and everything over to the right, also here. everything to his right side. There's the interception by Anthony Poindexter. Here's where he's trying to make something happen. Got hit by Maurice Anderson. And then here's the other fumble where there's good pressure. And the recovery by Monsanto Pope. Lubomir Staminich causing the turnover on the last possession. Total yards here in this quarter. Auburn has not gone forward. I've been there when you got an offense that's not sure, not confident. You, you need a lot of good players around. There's a Miko Kyer, the backup quarterback, and you're just trying to milk first downs out and, and get some big plays. So I, I know what Terry Baum's going through tonight. Now, this, is a, this is a tough experience. Sinkade Pennington has checked into the backfield. Eric Lowe in at receiver with the injury to Marquise Cooper. Second string receivers on the field. Clear to the fullback, Heath Evans. Heath Evans to the 42. Well, Jerry Punch was talking about moving the fullback around that they might not do it as much in the third quarter. Well, they get Heath Evans out of the backfield, and he, he makes this catch. He's going to come from right, right here out of the backfield. Now, what's going to happen here? It's a go switch on the backside, and Anthony Poindexter makes the sure tackle just to bring him down, let him move the chains, but let's don't give him any score. Workout warrior. Offensive coordinator Rodney Allison would like the fullback to typify this offense. Tough nose, move the chains. Keith Evans did it just there. Here is Pennington. Well, that Virginia defensive line is in the backfield most every snap. Back to Dr. Jerry. Talked to Bobby but to Terry Bowden about some first game fundamentals. He said his dad, Bobby Bowden, taught him a lot of things about football, but some of the important things with regard to the first game are the fundamentals of playing football. He said it may sound simple, Doc, but when you play your first game, you cannot have problems with a punting game and the kicking game. You cannot get a delay game penalty because you've got eight months to prepare for the football game. And it may sound simple, but you've got to have 11 men on the playing field. You can't have 10. You can't have 12. Those alumni in the stands, they can count, and so can the board of directors, and they hope you can, too. Those board of director guys, those are the tough ones, you know? The know-it-alls. Laird completes a first down to Clifton Robinson. Thinking of those board of directors, too. Oh, they're sitting in an air-conditioned booth, and they got a lot of time to make those decisions. But Ben Laird really... Look at it. He wants to be a leader he now. He wants to do it. He wants to get it done. He threw a nice pass to Clifton Robinson, showing a little fight in him, and the crowd is picking up and playing off of him right now. Boom me once, shame on you, right? <laughs> Try to get the fans back in his favor. 
Yeah, but you're, you can turn those boos into cheers very, very quickly. And the other way, too. Shorter memories than husbands, <laughs> someone once said about fans. Lear dealt with the man in his face. Eric Lowe, incomplete, they say. Well, Patrick Kearney really put pressure on Ben Lear. And you talk about gaining respect. Look at his helmets all tilted and everything. But your teammates rally around you when you give great effort and you show toughness. Uh, Patrick Kearney, number 58, is not buying any of that faking. He's coming strong to make that sack. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Eric Lowe, I couldn't tell. There's a new video replay board, and you heard the boos as that was replayed here in Jordan Hare. There it is. New addition here. New video board at Scott Stadium when Virginia starts its home schedule. Lear throwing more now. Looking deep. A good job by Clifton Robinson. He broke up what would have been an interception for Wale Alekbe. Well, Wale Alekbe was a linebacker last year, and they moved him back to free safety, and they said that's made him a better football player than he was a linebacker. He broke on this play and made uh, knocked the ball away. Again, Kearney, number 58, that hit, trying to, to get to Ben Laird. There's the deflection by Wale Alekbe. Good linebacker, too. He's fourth on this team in tackles. Yeah, that ball hung up there just a little bit too long. Third down conversion. Wow, three for ten. And a long way to go very often. Rusty Williams is the receiver to the near side. Normally a tailback. No time again. No, they, they brought the linebacker, but they may get a run from the passer here. Or will it be grounding? Or a holding, or a grounding. Could be anything here. <laughs> we'll run the gamut. The Virginia sideline was pointing for holding, the grounding. Yeah, they got to hold it. But you know, I, third down, I almost think they need to take this call because it was so deep, back them way back up, rather than give them a fourth down at the 45-yard line. I think I'd take this holding. Move them on back. Just a reminder, if you've been watching football in the preseason or watching only NFL, Holding college spot of the foul penalty. Fourth down. They turned it down, huh? I think I'd have taken that one. There's Kearney again, Patrick Kearney. Working against Kendall Mack. Yeah, I don't know if that's the holding they called, but uh, I think Patrick Kearney has become a nemesis for Ben Lear. Well, back to the punch for Jeremy Zills. This unproven player has shown quite well tonight. Thomas Jones back deep to receive. Fair caught at the 11 yard line. Virginia will start there. Virginia and a good one tonight. Terrence Wilkins. Pat popping at the 22. It's a first down, 11 yard pickup. Well, Terrence Wilkins is a former running back that when he came to Virginia, Virginia had a running back named Tiki Barber. And so two years ago, they moved him to wide receiver, a lot like you're seeing across campuses all over America. Running backs coming in, getting moved. Gets a little screen, gets a block from Kevin Coffey. There's a nice block by Coffey and uh, picks up good yardage for the first down. Wilkins broke Eric Metcalf's records in high school. Capable of the big play, number seven. It's number six, Thomas Jones. Uh, two first downs on consecutive plays for the Cavaliers, who offensively have, and defensively for that matter, really did a good, solid job at the line of scrimmage. Haven't dominated the Auburn defense, but they've done enough to keep them moving. No, former Ball State head coach uh, Paul Shadell is the offensive line coach, and he feels very good about his group. Robert Hunt, Fatty uh, Shimon, John St. Clair Center, who I think is really very good, Noel Lamontagne and Lawson. They get a good push on this defense. The freshman left tackle Lawson hanging in there tonight. 
Jones, 12 carries, 64 yards. Here's carry 13. Haven Fields from his inside linebacker spot making the stop. 90 seconds left, third quarter. Well, this Auburn defense has played their heart out. Now, they, they have had, uh, they, they've had a couple breakdowns on passing plays, but other than that, this unit is hung right in there. They have nine starters back when you count the defensive backs. Nolan, who played quite a bit last year, uh, nine starters back. So they're an experienced defensive front. They know they've got to win this football game. They've got to get the ball back. Antoine Womack now the back. A little confusion between Womack and Brooks, and Virginia again stubs its toe. Well, they, they also, all of a sudden now they haven't been in a split back much tonight, but they go back to a split back, and I think Aaron Brooks uh, was concerned whether it was going to give the ball to the left or the right. It's a formation that they haven't used much tonight. Now all of a sudden they're in a split back set right here, so now he doesn't know where to get the football off. And so uh, kind of a broken play. Third and long. Been a lot of those tonight. Both ways. Aaron Brooks threw it away. And a flag comes from deep in the secondary. I think a receiver was knocked down over there, but uh, the ball went was thrown out of bounds, so Coffee was the guy who got knocked down. He couldn't have caught that ball with a net off. <laughs> Jim Knight, the referee. Well, gonna get him for holding. That hurts. The foul is defensive holding against an eligible receiver. On a pass play where the ball crossed the yard, yard of scrimmage. Ten yards, automatic first half. Well, big, big penalty right there. And Kevin Coffey was the receiver that was being held. And a mistake by the Auburn defense. Keeps this drive alive and keeps the Virginia defense on the sideline. Bill Oliver, defensive coordinator. Frustrated. After his unit has kept Auburn in this game tonight. Former Alabama defensive coordinator. And he's used to seeing his defense have to go out and keep the offense in the game. Yeah, he's coached in Alabama and Auburn, and he's moved back and forth a couple of times. I don't That's know how he keeps his wardrobe, you know, the, the <laughs> colors of the teams uh, straight. But he, he is frustrated tonight because he knows his defense really played well. Made a couple mistakes, breakdowns and a couple pass plays, and that penalty right there. Auburn had to take a timeout. They were confused with substitutions. Virginia was ready to run a play. We'll step out here. Virginia leading. Auburn on the ropes. It's been 31 years since Auburn was shut out by a non-conference opponent. Right now, they are being shut out by Virginia. Cavaliers starting to take control of this game as we begin the fourth quarter. Looking for running room and not much there. It's been a steady diet of Jones and Womack, and that was Antoine Womack on the carry. After 45 minutes of play, the rushing numbers tell a big part of the story, Mike. And, and Mike, tonight both teams came in. They said, hey, we stunk running the football last year. We're going to run it better this year. Well, I think Virginia has to feel pretty good about what they've got accomplished, but Auburn has a problem. I mean, that, that's a problem. 14 rushing yards. And what happens is when you uh, don't have an adequate passing game to go along with a good running game, safeties move up and you run against a lot of people. Auburn was the third poorest rushing team in Division 1A last year, averaging 73 per ball game. Second and 10. First down, Terrence Wilkins to the 15 yard line. They picked up 17. Good pass and catch. Well, that, that might have been a backbreaker right there because uh, the confidence with which Aaron Brooks throws this football, good pass protection by his offensive line, steps up and he finds Terrence Wilkins. Now, what you want to do is throw right when he makes that cut, 
and he's wide open there. There's no backer, no safety inside there. He had some room. Larry Casher and Brad Ware make the tackle, but a, a nice opening there to get the football to. Brooks has hit his last six passes. Tight end Crawford moved to the right. They run that way with Womack for a yard. Mike, down here, when you get inside in the red zone uh, with this Virginia football team, now we, we've already documented how well the tight ends has caught, have caught the ball. But now the tight ends and running backs out of the backfield. And here comes Baber in the ball game. Uh, they become uh, people you have to worry about. So to me, if they're going to throw the football right now, you're going to see a tight end catch it or a back out of the backfield here in the red zone. This has been the best sustained drive of the night for either team. Second and nine. Everybody in the pattern. Ahmad Hawkins couldn't hang on. Nolan with the step. Well, Billy Baber's trying to say to the official they were holding him going up the football field. Uh, it was man coverage. He, he was trying to work up the football field. And I think uh, somebody grabbed a hold of him, and he was complaining. There you see him right there uh, talking about that he was being held going up the football field. He was the target for Aaron Brooks. And when he couldn't get him the football, had to come outside to Ahmad Hawkins. Wilkins comes near side. Hawkins up top. A little Virginia confusion. Yeah, a lot of Virginia confusion. That's not a good sign. They're all over the place. Musical chairs. The music's going to stop here soon. Yeah, this this was a bust. They'd have been better off called time out there. Here, here's the previous play, what I was talking about. Billy Baber is going to be the guy that uh, Aaron Brooks is looking for. 87, coming up the field. And there's the hold right there. Ryan Taylor has got a hold of him right there. And then that's where he was complaining because uh, Brooks was trying to go to the tight end, just there was no way to get him the football. Todd Braverman comes on for a, what would be a 32-yard field goal. Good from 24 from the right hash. Missed from the left hash from 39. This one from the right hash. Sideways, but it still counts for well, him. If he'd have missed that one, he'd have been in the back of the plane as far as you could go. So uh, that was a big kick for him. The 5'11 senior from California has now made it a double digit Virginia lead. 78,358 at Jordan Hare. Watching the Tigers do something that rarely happens being shut out in an opener at home. Two field goals from Braverman. Half the points for the Cavaliers. If you weren't with us earlier, an Aaron Brooks 61-yard touchdown to Kevin Coffey and a missed extra point the other six. True freshman Michael Burks. One of the deep men as David Green kicks off. And this is Burks at the five. Across the 25. Before the Auburn drive starts, here's Jerry Punch. Well, with less than 13 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, now is the time that the Auburn coaches were talking about needing some leadership on their football team. They said, we need a verbal bell cow, someone to come out and get the team pumped up. The problem is they've only got three seniors on the offense, Karsten Bailey, Kendall Mack, and Carl Levine. And all three of those guys, while they're good football players, they're very, very quiet when it comes to being in the huddle. And right now, they need some leadership. Mike is uh, senior leadership, senior leadership. We talk about it all the time. Is it overrated? No, I don't think so. The more seniors you have, I always like to see those seniors on your roster. Of course, you hate it the next year when they graduate, but you like the leadership. They've been around. Good experience. Near got it to Demontre Carter before he got hit, but Carter gets hit by three players from a rested Virginia defense. When you look at this Auburn offense and you dissect it a little bit, they've got a pretty good offensive line, and they... The loss of Baker, the wide receiver in the summer, leaves Carson Bailey, the only really experienced receiver out there. So, and, and I think Virginia knows that. They've done a good job shutting Bailey down. Uh, 
tonight. The, the tailbacks haven't been able to perform yet to take the pressure off Ben Leard. Of course, this gentleman right here has a lot to do with it. His staff and a great defense. So uh, defense is very, very good. Well, safe screen pass, lost three. Auburn can't get going in the right direction. It was Isabel again, the sophomore from Bluefield, West Virginia, in on the last two plays. There's just nothing open right now. The, the zone drops, uh, dropped right to the wide receiver, and uh, Karsten Bailey tonight has been quiet. Ben Lear trying to, to get him the football over the middle, and it almost was intercepted. Two catches for 24 yards for Karsten Bailey tonight. Uh, he has been shut out, and the reason he's been shut out, Mike, is there's nobody on the other side. He's having a great game, take pressure off of him. Poindexter made contact with the punter. Zills, it hit it off a Virginia player. Did Auburn recover before it went out of bounds? No, it is Cavalier ball. And on any punt, you can't get lax, and what happened was, I blame the, the tailback right there for, for Virginia. Uh, Thomas Jones because when the ball is short you've got to yell Peter Peter or some kind of word and get away from the football And that's th that's not what happened there My dear turnover that is so necessary for Auburn right now, but it's still Virginia ball There you go good job mom. It's been a tough day for the Auburn fans Virginia has come in here and taken a 12 nothing lead into the fourth quarter and the Cavaliers have the ball This might be the break Auburn needs right here. Defensively, they're going to give their offense the ball inside the 50-yard line. Marcus Washington with a big play. And Auburn's in business. Thomas Jones put it on the ground. First turnover of the night for the Tiger defense, which is hung in there. I don't know if Thomas Jones ever got the football on this play. Never had it. You know, it's like uh, I used to tell our quarterbacks, it's like an egg. You know, put it in there real soft so that he knows the football's in there. And that almost seemed like he hit him in the hip with the ball. Almost looked like there was more interest in creating the play fake yeah. and running that fake out instead of just getting the ball in well, there. Let's see, if, let's see if Auburn can make him pay. Carson Bailey near side. They run with the freshman Michael Burks to the 35-yard line with 10.42 left. You don't need to hit a home run. No, you've got time. I tell you, Anthony Poindexter makes a big play on Michael Burks on that play. It looked like it was going to go for more yardage, and all of a sudden you're going to see number three, Anthony Poindexter, come out of the secondary. And he makes the play, and that's what you have to have if you're a great safety. They're, they're good up the middle. Here's Anthony Poindexter right here, and he's going to go in this direction and make this play on Michael Burks. Close, good closing speed, and Anthony Poindexter made a good play. Clifton Robinson and Bailey, the receivers at the top of the screen. Burks again trying to spin free, nothing doing. Donnie Green, the sophomore weak side linebacker, said, I got you. Well, they, they're getting good play out of Monsanto Pope and Antonio Dingo and Coffee Bewa and Maurice Anderson. Those are the guys inside that they're, are just causing no movement. And they're allowing their linebackers to scrape off and make the play. This is a pretty interesting situation as Lance and the Virginia defense continue to clamp down on the Auburn rushing attack. All three of their losses that last year, negative rushing yardage. Tonight, Sacks have hurt the number, but they haven't run it from scrimmage well either. Well, they've got two downs to make this first down. The true freshman Burks in the backfield. Lear to the fullback. It'll be fourth down. He had, he had an open receiver, Michael Burks, on the other side. And I think Keith Evans may have made that catch. If he could have caught that ball, would have picked up the first down, too. Here's the play I'm talking about. Watch Michael Burks go to the left side. He's wide open up here with a lot of room to run, but he chose to come this side and still should have picked up the first down with that pass. 
with 9.14 left and a two possessions needed situation. You don't want to say this is the biggest play of the game. It's not far from it. Karsten Bailey trying to stretch it across the 33. It all depends on the spot. Mike, I don't think he made it. No, he's going to be close, but uh, Karsten Bailey's got to get to the sticks. And they fumbled the ball around there a little bit. I think he's a little short. Uh, but he had a hard time getting behind the linebackers. You go to your senior receiver. It's his third catch tonight. But did he get enough yardage for the first down? That's the big question. Groans or cheers? Well, it depends what team you're pulling for. That's right. The Virginia fans loud enough to be heard. The Cavalier defense by four links come up with a big stop. When you play zone coverage, your linebackers will open up and try to find crossing routes. Here's the play starts. Karsten Bailey, number five. Now the linebacker just breaks on the ball and makes the tackle and does a nice job of bringing him down. Threets. Here's the break by Byron Threets. And that's a sure tackle. Karsten Bailey's trying, and there comes Poindexter, who bends the pile the other way. Threet pulling his arm so Bailey can't stretch forward for the first down. Good little stuff there. Brooks That's back in the air, right back to Jones. After their mix exchange, they get a few yards. Well, you talk about good little things there. Fundamentals win ball games, and the, those are fundamentals you teach. And they knew not to allow him to get his arms out there. And then Poindexter, Anthony Poindexter, comes up, finishes him off, bends the pile back. So there's no doubt about him getting the first down. Now the clock becomes a factor. And remember, Auburn has only one timeout left. Taking all the time they can take to get the playoff. Jones, it'll be third and short. Auburn's defense asked one more time to keep the minute. They got the substitutions in late, and they had to call a timeout to keep from getting 12 men on the field. Auburn out of timeouts. Down 12 with 7.45 to go. Well, these are the four most important months of the year in this state, college football season. Although we can't endorse that young man's thought. Third and one. Got to stop Jones. The leap forward will depend on the spot. Rumbaugh at the bottom of the pile. Robert Hunt with a hand up. Hunt, the right tackle. Senior out of Newport News, Virginia. Well, you get, go air bound, born when you need a first down. He got up. He's real close, but I don't think he makes this either. I agree with you. You're wrong. That's right, you're wrong. <laughs> got a good spot. <laughs> In, in a world where you, you can talk to somebody via computer 6,000 miles away, the most inexact science is spot oh, the football. Right. And drives you guys nuts. It really does because you're relying on feet and hands and everything else. Eyesight, a chain on the other side. The Auburn defense will dig in and try to stop some more. Inside of seven minutes now. Jones across midfield. It's one of those situations you feel they are very close to breaking one. And now you teach your defenders to try to tackle the football. George Welsh has played tough people in season openers. The Clemson game was early in his tenure, but coming off a winning bowl season, they got blown out against number three. Remember the Mercury Hayes catch, the final play of the game at Ann Arbor? The loss to Auburn at home last year? This year, the defense is making a large, large statement in changing that list and adding a win to it.
Jones again for a few. And for Virginia, Mike, you know, their schedule, no schedule's easy when you're in a conference like the ACC, no. but they play Maryland and Clemson at home, at Duke, San Jose State, at Georgia Tech, NC State, at Wake Forest. You don't want to start talking ridiculous things early on. It's conceivable they could win all those games. Leave those ridiculous things to me, okay? okay. Because I'm going to tell you, <laughs> this conference this year, the ACC, they've got six, seven really good football teams. And I think this Virginia team, I've been sold on them for a long time because last year I watched them really improve game one to game 11. And I think this team has a quality to win their league title. And I know that's saying a mouthful. Jones tries to bounce it outside, stays on his feet, holds the football, and moves the chains. Thomas Jones, the junior at a big stone gap, Georgia, now getting close to 100 yards. He has 95. Now, I'm going to finish this by saying Virginia will be a legitimate threat here in their top 10, I think the top 10 football team. But they have a chance in this league this year. Someone, I know Bobby Bowden's watching this game, but somebody's got a chance to beat Florida State this year. I think this league is better than it's ever been. And I think from top to bottom, uh, there are some teams that if Florida State doesn't get ready to play or overlooks a team, not the coaches, they won't sure, do that. Sure. But somebody's got a chance to knock them off this year. First time I could ever say that. Womack spells Jones and Antoine Womack and Thomas Jones. That ball down? No, it was down before it came free. They're, they're trying to steal the ball, and that, that's good coaching by the Auburn coaches trying to take the football away. Well, Thomas Jones has really shown something tonight. He carried 200 times last year, was the leading returning rusher in the ACC, and he's really proven it against a good defense. Well, the difference in the ball game tonight has been the fact that they can run the football. Virginia, they 94 yards out of Thomas Jones, and they're over 100 yards now. And with that mix, Aaron Brooks becomes a better quarterback. The receivers can mature a little bit. Auburn on the other side, it really haven't, hasn't helped Ben Lear because the players around him have not performed. Womack gets close to a first down. He's averaged five yards a carry. Well, Jimmy Brumball, is the senior, is 6'1", 286. He just battles on, uh, take, takes on the block right here. A fatty Shimon and then uh, makes the play. And Terry Bowden, he talked about this to us yesterday. He's got a very young football team. Absolutely. You know, when you look at seniors, two, three seniors, as Jerry Punt said, on the defensive side, his offensive team is very young, too. And he opens up next year with his father in Florida State. And I was talking to a couple of the Auburn coaches the other day, and they said they called Florida State coaches to wish them, uh, congratulate them on their win over Texas A&M. And they said, this year we call you and congratulate you. But we notice you don't have any seniors either. So <laughs> they've got a very young football team for Bobby Bowden. So they're going to square off in the first game of the year next year. A Thursday nighter on ESPN. Father against son. Won't that be something special? Inside of four minutes, Brooks has orchestrated a very good Virginia offense tonight. Very good performance by the Virginia offense tonight. Womack lost his footing, no yards there. Let's go back to Jerry Punch. As we mentioned, Jimmy Brumball underwent reconstructive knee surgery for a ruptured patellar tendon some nine months ago after the Georgia game lack in November. Now, renowned orthopedic surgeon Jimmy Andrews said it takes about 12 months for that to completely heal. So basically, Brumball is out on the playing field at nine and a half months there with that, with that uh, operated left knee. He tonight is not 100%. He is playing on raw courage and effort alone. Here's a young man who loves the game of football. And when he couldn't practice, he had his wife, Kelly, driving to the practice field. He would sit up in the car and watch the team play. That's how much he loves being an Auburn Tiger. And wearing it on his sleeve tonight, his effort has shown he can overcome the physical limitations. Womack turns the corner to the nine-yard line. Virginia has controlled the line of scrimmage here in the final 30 minutes. Antoine Womack is making a cutback again. When you play a fast defense like Auburn, the linebackers slide down the line of scrimmage. And Anton Walmart is going to cut back. Now, here's, here comes a blitz from the outside. But he's going to cut back inside that blitz. 
And then there's going to be a missed tackle right here by Quentin Reese and now down the sideline. So again, the cutback play has been a good play for the Virginia running back, Antoine Womack. Womack and Jones. What a job. And the offensive line. Womack. Boston. Well, I was going to say, Womack's highly recruited. Penn State uh, thought they had him, and Virginia took him away. Here is Jones. A couple of yards away. Jones was on the sidelines looking tired. They got inside the red zone, and, oh, the first stringer was ready to go back in. Yeah, and they, uh, they know that uh, they want to keep their position. Smelling a touchdown. That's <laughs> right. I'll say this about Auburn now. They, they're still playing on defense. Look at uh, Brad Ware at 27. Gives up his whole body to make that tackle. This this defense will not quit. They have given a great effort. And they will, they will keep getting better on this defensive side of the ball. Dan and Kenny are coming up in a couple of minutes. Seven-minute punishing drive. Hacked off by a Thomas Jones touchdown. That was pretty good. Well, they opened up a good hole. They got a good block out of Noel Lamontine. And Paul Shadell, who's uh, been an outstanding offensive line coach uh, his entire life, is proud of his offensive line because they came off the ball and made this play happen. Josh Lawson, Noel Lamontine, John St. Clair, Fatty Shimon, and Robert Hunt. Outstanding offensive line play. Like 12 plays, 11 runs, one pass. How long has it been since Auburn was shut out in a home opener? Well, the Virginia fans, led by the Poindexters, as you see there in the middle of the screen, quite pleased on the Auburn side. Something that hasn't happened in 71 years may happen. Shut out in a home opener. Stetson Racers. Did Hatters. It. Hatters. 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 Well, Al although they may have been the Racers in 27, Mike. I'm, yeah, I'm 20, not sure. 20, 27. I don't remember that. They did it. <laughs> Six to nothing. <laughs> Touchdown without the extra point or two field goals. Do you remember? Uh, Bino I, probably remembers. Yeah, Bino right? knows for sure. Corso was there, of course. Another big hit by Virginia. Defense or special teams. Burks down at the 21. Nico Collier in the game. The Richard freshman quarterback hands to Michael Burks, who doesn't get much. Doc was excited about that oh. uh, the race. I think he's excited to get rid of us, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miko Collier in the game at quarterback. Young man out of Georgia. Nearly moved him to tight end this year. And really, with Gabe Gross, a true freshman who came in and did such a good job, Collier could have been moved to tight end, if not perhaps for an injury. Well, Gabe Gross is a, a freshman quarterback that got his hand hurt, broke a bone in his hand, but he's really been making strides. But I thought Ben Laird played well tonight I, in his first game. He didn't get a lot of help on the field. And he's up against a very, very good defensive football team. Collier to throw on second and 11. Complete six throws pass. It will be easier now. They're playing prevent defense. Eric Lowe out to the 35. Mike, it doesn't get any easier for Auburn, too. They, they, they've got a tough schedule. Ben Laird's going to see some other pretty good defenses down the way. Finished with one interception, 146 yards in uh, passing yardage. We'll show you what Auburn has coming up on this. Really as tough an opening six as anybody in the country has after this play. Collier, smart to hold on after being knocked down by Lubomir Staminich, who's had a good game for Virginia. Well, conference game at Ole Miss. You and Ron Franklin yeah, will be, be here back for LSU. the LSU game. They get Tennessee at home. Mississippi State team that everybody figures is going to be strong in the West and about as good a defense as I've seen in college football on the 17th of October. They're going to see them. I was down watching practice at Gainesville. Uh, and Got a chance to see Steve Spurrier and uh, Bobby Stoops defense. They look like a pro defense physically. Uh, they, they got some things uh, down there that other 
program's going to have on that side of the ball. They got some talent. Well, Virginia showed us a lot on both sides of the ball tonight. The Cavaliers become the first team to come into Jordan Hare and shut out the Auburn Tigers in a home opener. They were disappointed last year when they lost the opener, but this year it's the road team getting the victory again. George Welsh comes away with a victory in an opener against the top 25 team, and this Virginia team could be on its way to a very good season. Sports Center's coming up with Dan Patrick and Kenny Mayne, with Dr. Jerry Punch and Mike Gottfried. Mike Tirico on a night when Aaron Brooks had the receivers and had the defense to rattle Ben Laird. Virginia beats Auburn 19 to nothing. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.